I think actually you're not supposed to be here. And also I heard that you're dying. I'm not dying. I'm perfectly fine, but you can't be here. You can't be at this moment. You are not here. That is not how this is supposed to go. reckoning for all of you apparently is at hand and he points up towards the sky a tear appears in space and the broken skull comes flying out of it like a rend in reality ah the mistake you're making is aiming for the head center mass is just as lethal he pulls the other one and with a natural 20 Puts it right in your chest, Torfin, for 30 points of damage. Uh, yeah. So I am on my, I'm actually on my second death save. And the tentacles lash out and wrap around the ship. You see them all <laughs> as it like hits into the side of the Decidueon and starts pushing much, much faster directly towards the eye of the void. The Nautiloid begins to glow and vanishes as the Decidueon tumbles end over end straight into the Eye of Doom. And you all see this swirling black mass come up and there is nothing. Hello and welcome to Legends of the Multiverse. This is episode 11, No Lack of Void. Uh, before we get into it, let's uh, first introduce all you wonderful people, uh, starting with our returning champion, Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny D. Wait, am I supposed to say who I'm playing? I forgot. I mean, now's as good a time as any, yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny D. I am playing Gospel, the cleric, and uh, I love the void. I mean... <laughs> I think you're all about to learn to love the void. That's uh, that's uh, <laughs> hopefully, you know, whatever. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's uh, I'm just saying y'all didn't know that this show was so experimental that everybody can get killed and start with a whole new cast next week. Hey, <laughs> that's probably not what's going to happen. I mean, statistically Im improbably. Anyway, Megan. <laughs> I'm not not looking forward to my first TPK, but unexpected. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Megan Kenrick. I'll be playing uh, Riddle, uh, Stabby, Fun-Loving, Klepto, Autonome, Phantom Rogue. I mean, for what it's worth, 100% of the TPKs I've done were strictly for charity. So you really only <laughs> have to worry if we're, like, raising money for something. But, I mean, if something happens to the ship, I don't Good know that. Good to know. Ah, uh, yes. It bees like that. We sometimes. kill for charity. I like That's it. True. That's true. We exactly. kill for charity. That's yeah. the new name for like the it. show. That's Do it, it for the kids. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. We're, we're not pirates. We're privateers. It's not yeah. the same thing. Uh, Gina. Hi, I'm Gina Darling, and I am your friendly neighborhood kleptomaniac, uh, Kender Grave Cleric. Watch pockets. Oh, and this is Tiny. Say hi, Tiny. Hi, Tiny. And <laughs> Last but certainly not least, uh, somebody who is actually was in a little bit of a rough spot at the end of next ep last episode, but we'll get to that next time. I don't know what you're talking about. Everything's totally <laughs> fine. Uh, hi, I'm Todd Kenrick, and you may have seen me on D D Things. Uh, yeah, I play Torvin. He is a battle master, and he got shot right through the center mass of his chest by uh, a really nasty mind flare gunslinger. And Walk it uh, off. I'm Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on my second death. I'm uh, I'm on my third death save actually, and we're gonna be rolling for that. So everything's totally okay. Yeah. 
you know, I believe in you that statistically speaking, you're probably going to be okay. Like maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, but now I got this weird scar. (laughs) I'm I'm like, you know, I know you're guest in here, Jenny, but maybe you have like subsequent Wednesdays free because there might be a spot opening up. I don't know. I'm just saying like whatever, like, you know, like whatever. Don't tell me that before I have the opportunity to help save him. (laughs) Be a Um, real shame if something were to happen. I know spell slots. Weird. (laughs) Weird. (laughs) Gospel was just like doing some other stuff in <laughs> Void, just doing void stuff. <laughs> just just doing hot void stuff. Just doing void hot stuff. Void doing void it's stuff. hot void summer. Hot void summer. Hot void summer. Hot void summer. Yeah. The hot void summer. Yes. So when last we met, you all were in the clutches of Vokath, who is a Mercane. Uh, you have now met a couple of Mercanes, including Hobsol, the one who set you off on this mission in the first place. Uh, the Mercane, again, are merchants, and they are all telepathically interconnected all the time. And you were warned repeatedly to avoid offending them, because to offend one of them was to offend all of them. You all beat Indrasil, the lunar dragon, in combat and offered him to leave with you, which in the process of did in fact defend Volkath, who offered to pay you what you were owed for Hapsil. And essentially, after some pleading and some very shrewd negotiating on you guys' part, said, essentially, I'd already given your ship away, so if you can manage to recover it, then fine, all will be forgiven. And as Indrasil burrowed out of the arena, Boxy heard him say in passing, but well, he's here. He's here now. While you guys got back to the decision on your ship, you found it overrun by Artuk, which are a highly aggressive plant-like species that in the midst of a very pitch battle, you very narrowly managed to recover the ship from as everyone else was fleeing around you, including Vokath himself, which it revealed as the Broken Skull, Hakatha Slam ship appeared in the sky over Vokath's base. Uh, Kaiho, rolling a natural 20, managed to pull some pretty fancy evasive maneuvers, but unfortunately, Mind Flayer Nautiluses, Nautiluses, Nautiluses? Not a loy? Not, 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 not a loy? Squiddy ships have the ability to jump across basically time and space whenever they want to, was able to get ahead of you. And Hakatha Slim himself was standing on the roof. Of, well, actually, even before he was standing on the roof, he appeared on the ship as a major image, uh, which Ray, um, Riddle was able to detect as he was able to just walk around and generally antagonize you until his ship appeared in front of you with the Mind Flayer himself standing up on the deck of it. After a gun battle with Bugsy and Torvin uh, attempting to give the best that they could, the almost, well, literally supernaturally fast mind flare with his own natural 20 hit Torvin center mass and dropped him into death saves. The broken skull actually rolled again, yet a third natural 20 on its attack with the tentacles and began crushing the deciduan and driving it into the eye of doom. The swirling mass vortex in the middle of this solar system that is slowly drawing all the planets into an unknown and presumed terrible fate. And at the last moment, Hakatha Slim telling all of you that his one regret is he wouldn't be there to see Kaiho Kuroshi's face as his little friend Boxy met the void and jumped the ship away again as the Decidjuan tumbled helplessly end over end, broken and cracked into the eye of doom. After a few moments, Gospel, as a cleric of the void, you are familiar with the spaces between the place of no place. Your mind, and even on occasion, Bodily, you are able to inhabit this place and you become aware of an odd ripple, like a very large stone thrown into a pond and then a handful of smaller stones thrown in. 
that echo out across the endless nothingness that you're currently dwelling in. What would you like to do? That's not right. I want to move towards the largest ripple in in the way that you can move in the void, which is which I know. <laughs> of course. It, especially for someone such as you, you just intended and it is so. Yeah. You hear a familiar voice saying, oh, I've got this. I, I, I don't care. Not like this. Not like this. And you see Kaiho Kuroshi surrounded almost by like a light, a halo of nothingness. You saw the Spelljammer helm in the Decidueon and you see him in it, his hands actively gripping the sides of the console, sweat drenching his face as he is very intently trying to steer the ship. And after a moment, there is a flash of light and you see him somewhere else, a battlefield, but it's quiet. The wind's barely blowing and there is just death and devastation in all directions. You see the broken, torn bodies of Githyanki and Githzerai alike, interspersed with the corpses of mind flayers and all manner of horrific abominations in once sentient beings that they'd enslaved, strewn about as far as your eye can see, and you just see him standing there. And you notice the milky white eye and the scar that you're aware he has isn't there. He has two solid jet black eyes. His clothing is tattered. He's clearly injured. And he's just standing there looking confused. I walk over to him and put a hand on his shoulder. <laughs> Kaiho, what are you doing here? Wow, well, I could ask you the same question. How, how, how am, am I dead? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Do you feel dead? <laughs> I would say I don't know what death feels like, but that isn't technically true. No, normally I just felt Nothing. Like when you sleep. Like what I presume it was like before I was born in the first place. And mere moments later, I wake up to Boxy's smiling face, having pulled me back from the void once more. Or I see my ancestors uh, clamoring for me to join them. Clam calling for me to join the hunt to chase these squids into the next world and whatever oblivion lay beyond that. But never this is this a place you recognize <sighs> yes yes this was this was the last time the last time what you see he looks down and just kind of sinks to his knees for a moment in reaches out and just cradles the head of a nearby Gith Zarai. How well would you think Gospel knows Gith Yanki? Are these the people that she's spent any meaningful time around? Probably not very well at all. I think uh, she would have a lot of trouble retaining in-depth information about things that she hadn't spent a ton of time with. Give me a perception check. I can do that. I can roll a die. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a natural 20, so that makes it a 28. Hey, perfect. <laughs> well, you are literally in your element, Gospel. As you see, he cradles the head of this woman here. At first, you realize they just have similar beads in their hair. Even though he's a little younger, he still has the mohawk that trails off into dreads you're aware of. But it's more than that. There's a resemblance in their bone structure. Even though 
Githyanki and Githzerai look similar. They're all very different from you with their leathery skin and flat noses. But with your natural 20, you realize this woman's identical to him, but a little older. Could be his mother. All of these dead Gith all look like him. This was probably his family. Oh, this is... I think maybe this isn't real, now, at least. <laughs> you know, I spent so much time running from Hakatha Slim, and then to die such an inglorious way, perhaps I was simply cursed to come to a place where there are no ancestors. Boxy isn't here. There's... No one. Perhaps I've just died dishonorably, and this is my punishment. Mm, I don't think so. It doesn't feel like you're supposed to be here. <gasps> I would say that it feels like you're not supposed to be here, and you see he stands up and extends to his full height and says, actually, let's see if he realizes. <sighs> he got a big old seven. <laughs> Gospel, <laughs> whatever this is, you realize he's having difficulty seeing past it. Just. <sighs> Why don't I help you get to where you're supposed to be? <sighs> um, what even would that entail? What are you presupposing that I deserve? Oh, it's not so much about what you deserve, but. Last time that I was with you all, I learned something about how things were supposed to be for me, and it seems like now would be a good time to repay the favor. There's ripples coming off of you that shouldn't be here, so... Gospel, the moment you say that, you feel on your head the long-heeled wound of the Mind Flayer's beak that very narrowly took your life before you dispatched it into the next world begins to bleed faintly. It doesn't hurt. The blood just begins to trickle. Huh. Do you remember this? Yes. I'm sorry that I wasn't there to decapitate that thing before it could harm you. That's all right. Sometimes things happen that you can't prevent. <sighs> we, I have rolled a seven and then two ones in a row for this poor guy. <laughs> He's like, well, guess I'm dead. Oh, see you later, Gospel. Um, you see, he leans towards you. And he holds his hand out slightly, like he wants to touch. And he's like, may I? Sure. You see, he runs his finger slightly through the blood. He's like, have you found Boxy? Oh, I haven't seen Boxy for, is it years? <sighs> we, <sighs> there was, there was a place, um, Eye of Doom, they called it. It's a massive swirling, just sucking planets, the incomprehensible sphere into it, crushing it into to bits and components. We were, we were thrown into it. Is, is that why you're here? We're in the void. Yes, I imagine that's it. I was really hoping you came here on your own accord because you had listened to me and found that you actually wanted to come here and learn. But if that isn't it, then perhaps I should help take you back out of it. You see suddenly his eyes get very wide and he just reaches out and he grabs you by the shoulders and he says, Torvin, 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 Torvin was dying. Hakatha Slim, he, he shot him. It, it, you have to find Torvin. It's, don't worry about me. Just come back for me. You have to find him. Okay, I'm sure I can find them. Could I ask one small thing before you do? Sure. 
when you see them, speak not of this. Of this battle? I don't speak of this. I won't tell them anything. And you see, he turns around and he starts saying something that you think is probably a prayer of some sort and unsheaths his sword and you see it erupts into flames and he starts touching into each of the bodies one by one and you see the green flames spreading out over this landscape. I'm going to uh, kneel down beside him really quick and just, or, or beside where he starts. Uh, and I'm just going to mutter some creepy void things uh, of my own. And then I'll say, I get the impression that you want this to happen quickly. The finding. He turns and looks back at you and says, Time and space don't really seem to have much meaning for us now. Again, I can't tell you if it's been years since we've seen you or not, but I do know the boundary between life and death is a razor's edge. And he holds up the sword. I don't know how much time Torvin has left, if it hasn't run out already. All right. I'll find him. Thank you. In... Thank you for coming, I suppose. You're and you, s- you see when he says that right in front of you, his black eye turns the solid milky white. And you see the scar just start to expand over his face. Ah, you're back. Ah, like I said, come back for me. And he turns and walks away from you again. I want to close my eyes and see if I can sort of feel for any of the other ripples that I sensed. Torvin, where does gospel find you? Again, gospel, you know, people misunderstand the void. They think it's synonymous with death. It isn't. They think it's evil. It isn't. Neither is it good. The void is absence. It is void. And as such, you easily traverse the veil. Torvin, when she discovers you, what does she see? Uh, Gospel finds herself in a almost incomprehensibly large, perfectly spherical room. No point of it is flat. And it's almost like made out of some kind of wrought iron. And there is a hum, almost... Not a mechanical hum, but almost like a heartbeat like hum to the metal. Everything's kind of vibrating with a rhythm. And in the center at the bottom of the sphere is a pool of black and red liquid just resting there. And there are red veins throughout this metal as well. And there feels differently here. And you notice there is some condensation in the room. But that condescent that those little droplets of water are actually falling upwards, not down. And you see Torvin crawl out of this black pool, screaming. And all around the pool are different statues of all sorts of races from the multiverse all in different states of decay. Some of them, these statues are broken. Some of them are too well-defined maybe to be uh, have been sculpted. But the scream just kind of echoes throughout the entire room. Torvin. Can, can you stop that? It's really, it's really echoey in here. You're not supposed to be here. You need to leave. I think, actually, you're not supposed to be here. And also, I heard that you're dying. I'm not dying. I'm perfectly fine. But you can't be here. You can't be at this moment. You are not here. That is not how this is supposed to go. 
That's so funny that you say that because actually I think you're you're not I think actually you're not here. The, hang on. Can 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 Is there a place that we can stand together in this room? It though it is perfectly spherical on the inside of this place, uh it's so massive that it's flat enough to walk around. That's the enormity of the room that you're in right now. I'm going to walk over close to him and is is he like down on the ground? He at first when he he emerges from the liquid it's all kind of coming off of him and the liquid actually forms clothes on him as he comes out of the pool. Uh I'm just going to offer my hand to to help him stand up. Uh he takes a, he takes your hand. Gospel, I don't know why you're here. But you have to leave now before it's too late. What What would make it too late? Torvin's eyes go jet black and his irises completely disappear. And he leans into you. The void is here. Yes. No, you do not understand. I am the void. That's wonderful, Torvin. I'm so happy for you. That's, oh, so much work and, and time and meditation goes into something like that. I'm so impressed with your progress. Gospel, give me either religion or perception, whichever is higher. Okay, it's going to be perception. That's going to be a, despite what you might think. Well, it doesn't really matter because I just rolled a natural one. My only two rolls have been a 20 and a 1. It's, I, I believe that. But you know what? I'm, I'm even with a 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this one because this is what you do. That 1 accounted for your initial reaction. That That's so great. So much prayer and meditation. I'm on that path. And it's almost like it hits you. No, he is the void. He's not being figurative. The Torvin you knew wasn't. At least you didn't think so. You didn't detect anything from him in particular. But now that he stands here in front of you, he is embodying the absence that you've come to know and, quite frankly, worship. Oh. I'm going to get down on my knees. Torvin. She's not supposed to be happy about this. <laughs> and yet. And yet. Gospel, you don't understand. It's here. And behind Torvin, almost like Torvin is the eclipse for what's in the very center of the sphere, spherical room, a black mass appears, just kind of shimmering. Every time someone talks, it reacts to sound, and it just is swirling and massive in the center of everything. And there's since you are probably since you worship the void. It's emitting darkness, but for you, it emits light. And it's hitting all of the statues, including Torvin, at the same time. And Torvin just changes into you, into your form. And his eyes remain jet black. And he perfectly mimics sitting down and praying. Oh, this is a problem. This is, this is... This is a problem, you know, this would be lovely, but Torvin, this is not what Torvin would want, and this is not certainly what Riddle or Boxy or Kaiho would want. What about Riddle and Boxy and Kaiho? Torvin snaps back and looks like Torvin again. He, you see bones kind of snap and flesh crawls until he looks like himself again, and it's disconcerting for a moment. He's both looking like Gospel and also looking like Torvin. Riddle, oh. 
Uh, that's right. There's the crew. We got to save the crew. I know. Yes. I forgot. I'm the captain. Yes. You need not. How many other people have you been talking to? I, I spoke with Kaiho before, but that's all. He told me you were dying, so it was important that I come to you. Gospel, I, I, I think you're a perfectly kind person, and I appreciate your company, and I appreciate you knocking me out of this, but if you ever speak about this... Oh, another vow of silence. I'm becoming familiar with these. That's good. Uh... We better get back to the ship. Who else? Yes. Well, we need to get Riddle. We yes. need to get Riddle. We need to find Riddle. She's my charge. I will take care of Riddle. I will go and find Riddle. I think perhaps you should not spend any more time here. Time moves differently here. Let me leave. You need to find back. Boxy as well. Yes. Don't worry. I'll find them. Let me take you back to the ship. And how does she take me back to the ship? Do I like, it's like <laughs> what happens? I you, just, I, you, you, you are the master of the void gospel. So, I mean, I didn't mean to interrupt there, Torvin, but it's, it's, it is how you say it is gospel. However, you lead him out of this place. I'm going to hold up my hand and then say, may I? I suppose so. I don't know what kind of witchery is about to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I, like her face is not reassuring in any way. She looks like weirdly real pumped about it. <laughs> and then she's going to reach out and just put her hand on your forehead. And then I don't I mean, I imagine that he would like just sort of fade out. <laughs> Gospel, is, is it your intent to look for Riddle next? Yes, it is. I'm following those ripples in the void. Torvin, before Gospel leaves, what, if anything else, happens from this sphere before she departs this place? Torvin turns around. And pull, pulls out a, a blade and throws it into the black mass. And at that moment, a, a, a completely absent of light bolt shoots out of this, this undulating mass in the center of this room. And it strikes Torvin. And Torvin starts to turn to stone himself. And he becomes stone. And he tips over and breaks into a, a hundred little pieces of stone. And all, all of those little pieces start moving upwards in reverse of gravity. And, but the blade hits this black mass and the black mass starts rippling and undulating and spewing blood, both black and red. And it all drops to the bottom of the sphere, creating a pool. And then Torben comes out, screaming. Again. Gospel, as you witness this scene transpire, you are aware that you've accomplished what you've set out to do. You have gotten Torvin out of here. Although the meaning of this odd cyclical cycle of death and rebirth eludes you, at least in the short term. Give me oh, I want to figure out what's happening here so bad, but I got to go find Riddle. Give me a perception check with advantage. All right. We will roll the die that gave me a 20 and the die that gave me a 1 and see who comes out on top. I believe in them both. Oh, my God. It's a 3 and a 13. Okay. 13. That's a 21. I was about to say the void giveth and the void taketh <laughs> away. Again gospel the void is absence so when there is a presence here it of course echoes to anyone who can hear it anyone who can feel it you are intrinsically aware of the presence of riddle and boxy you believe you can find them easily enough 
but there were three other presences that you can't quite pinpoint. You can't quite detect. And there's not many beings that should be able to hide themselves from you. But as you narrow in on Riddle's presence, again, willing yourself to be where she is, Riddle, what does she see when she finds you? When Gospel is observing Barovia, she sees a Dampier gnome frantically constructing what looks to be a robot out of scrap metal. Um, if Gospel is at all aware of Kryn, she would know that this is metal sourced from a ship from Kryn. And this little robot cannot speak yet, but with every piece that this Dampier gnome puts together, this little robot gains sentience. Gospel, Barovia is a dark and gloomy place. There is a pressure about it. That just the air itself is driving down your soul just being here. The sky is cloudy and gloomy you can make out no stars although you are aware it is nighttime and tall craggly trees stand in all directions and in the center of it there is a gigantic castle that is stabbing the sky almost as an assault where this gray-haired rock gnome diligently works away on a form that you are coming to recognize as riddle Oh, excuse me. I think you're building my friend. Oh, sorry. Uh, you, you gave me quite a, quite a scare there. And, and, and things here usually don't scare me. I've, I've seen everything. I, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, my name's Whittle. Well, who are you? Your name's Whittle. Oh, that's great. That makes a lot of sense, actually. I'm Gospel. Oh, nice to meet you, Gospel. I need to take your, this, this, your project home. Um, I don't mean to be rude, but I've been working on this thing real hard because Barovia Ravenloft has been real lonely for me. And I've been here for a few hundred years and I was kind of hoping I, would, I could create a companion for myself. Um, you, you see, we're planning on creating an academy for a bunch of gnome squidlings. So what, what do you need her for? Well, you see, it's not um, exactly, well, that's a shame. I mean, the good news is that you do it, you know, you succeed. How do you know that? Well, this isn't, this, mm, mm, I haven't had very much luck communicating this to people so far. This just isn't, this isn't really happening. For you or for me? That's a good question. I think the real question is, how is it happening for Riddle? Riddle, are you, are you there? Oh, hold on. I, I, I just gotta install the mouth. Uh, all right. Riddle, welcome to life. Oh, hi. Uh. Oh, this is, this is a pretty fantastic body that you created for me. Are you my mom? No, I'm not, your, I'm not technically your mom, but I, I did create you. Oh, okay. Who's that? Hi, I'm Gospel. The void greets you, but also you're not really supposed to be in it, and you kind of are, and I've been asked to get you out of it. I don't, this is so, hmm. Mom, what's the void? He said she's not your mom. Oh, Whittle, I don't understand what's happening. I'm new to everything. 
I, I feel like, um, you know, she's kind of new to this whole life thing. Um, yeah. Can, can we just talk off to the side for a sure. second? Sure. Yeah. So, um, this void thing you talk, you're talking about, is this going to affect Riddle's future in some way? Oh, yes. Like in a good way or a bad way? Well, that remains to be seen. Is her presence needed in this void to help whoever she knows in the future? Yes, but it's more like her presence is needed out of the void, you know? Do you know? I don't know. I'm supposed to lead her back. All right, well, I wasn't really planning on not having my companion here so soon after creating her, but... Well, if you stay here in this strange little loop of weird, repeating, false existence, then maybe I can come back and talk with you. That would be really great, because the, the fun thing about this repeating existence is that I can't leave. But I think Riddle might be able to, because she's very pure. Riddle. Give me an intelligence check. Not a save, just a check. Nine? First 30 or so seconds of life. I mean, this is great. You know, a little confusing. They're talking about some stuff you don't understand, but that's cool. You know, like you got wheels, you got wheels on your feet. That's all right. You crossbow and a sword. Things are going in the right direction. And suddenly you very vividly, very vividly see a beautiful astral elf draw his gun and point at a terrible squid face thing that is just a little faster and, and you see him hit the ground and you know just it's like it shot you um hey hey whittle i know that i'm really new to life but i feel like my purpose is leaving here with gospel if that's okay with you i promise i'll come back to visit Oh, great. That makes things so much easier. Are you ready to go back? Well, you say go back, but I feel like I've never been there. But I, I, I think you've in some way seen the future. I think hopefully once you're there, you'll remember it. But it's very important to Torvin that you go back. Torvin, well, you, you have to go. Okay. Do you know Torvin? Yeah, who he's who I was planning on sending Riddle to to uh to train her. Oh. Well then this is really kind of the same thing that you were originally planning on. Are you gonna make me promise not to tell anyone something? <laughs> no, I, I don't have any secrets. I feel like everyone knows about this place. I don't want to come here. Okay. That's good, because I don't know how many of those I can remember to not tell people. Anyway, are you ready, Riddle? And Riddle reaches out her hand, her gospel's hand. I'm going to take it, and then, like, light and dark will sort of come out of where our hands join together, and then sort of circle around our hand, hand and little robot hand, and then go around Riddle and, and she will sort of like glow and then fade. And then there was one, Boxy. When Gospel finds you, where's Boxy? Mm. Gospel finds Boxy in a dark pitch black forest where it's nearly it's nearly impossible to see beyond her hand, but in the middle, she sees a warm glowing light where Boxy is bouncing around and prancing and playing in the center in a patch of grass. It's unsettling, but somehow still welcoming. Boxy is playing with the blood and flesh of a dozen animal corpses like a child on a playground 
She runs with absolute joy. She is singing. My little furry friends have no fear. The best doctor in the land is here. You see, to Boxy, all her friends are still alive. To anyone else looking in, they are just these bloody corpses and pieces. Um, Boxy doesn't notice gospel standing here. As far as Boxy's concerned, she is so happy to be reunited with all of her friends. We know that as a kinder, uh, Boxy almost looks like a child all the time to anybody who is not paying close attention. Does she look any younger or does she look roughly like the same face that Gospel would have recognized from before? She looks a bit younger. You can tell, but Gospel knows. That's that's Boxy. Um, and Boxy looks over to Gospel and says, Oh, a creepy blind lady. Oh, come, come, come. These are my friends. I, and then Boxy grabs the head of a cat. This is Nibbler. I met him when I was three. I, oh, oh, and these are, no, these are still, these are still fluffy and cute. This is, this, 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 this is Lexi and Kayla and their sisters. They're the cutest things in the whole entire world. I named this one Torvin. That one's Kaiho. Uh, this one's, this one's Riddle. Her foot broke, but I put a little wooden wheel, so it should be okay. They come, come. And she drags, she tries to drag gospel into the circle of light that she's playing in. Boxy. Ah! This is, this is, this is good that you, well, I don't know that this is good. Uh, um, no, thank you. Do you know where you are? I, I'm, I'm home. I'm home. I, this is, I, I, with all my friends, I haven't seen them in so long. I'm, I'm home. It's, it's nice here, right? I, these are my, these are my animal friends. I suppose it depends on what seems nice to you, but I, I will say you're, you're not, you're not, you might be home to you, but, uh, there are other people who need your help too. And, um, we need to take you back to them. Oh, I know, I know, I know a lot of people need my help. I'm the best doctor in all the land, right? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't really been all over the land or know what land you're talking about, but you seem pretty good. You helped me. I did. I did. Yeah. I can, I can go help more people. You want, I can help more people. I'm really good at it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I think everybody needs your help. You know, Torvin, I heard that he's dying and it was sort of hard <laughs> to tell. Him. Oh, oh no, that's not a good thing. Oh, but. I can fix him. Ah. Both of you hear this gospel. You hear it as well. Boxy, a cold breeze blows through the trees around you. And in a voice you've heard many times, Boxy, that has been talking to you since you were a very small kinder, just says, Boxy. Would you like your friends back? Do I hear that or does only Boxy hear that? You absolutely hear it. The wind blows and you hear the voice say out loud. Uh, Boxy grips onto Gospel's hand a little bit tighter um, and looks up and says, uh, uh, Yeah, I, w I want my, my I want, yeah, I want my friends back. Boxy, who is that? You see the animals start healing. The ones that are largely intact begin to heal and, and return to life. Birds get up and flex their wings. But gospel, the ones that aren't intact start moving too. Disembodied claws and paws, eyes open and look around as life is restored to all of these things whether or not they're quite capable of sustaining it boxy, boxy. you know this friend has helped you lots of times mm -hmm. this is how you became such a great doctor mm -hmm. yeah yeah look look they're all coming back look see hi nibbler boxy that that seems this seems maybe 
Is this how? I thought. This seems bad. What? Uh, no, but they're they're back. I. They're they're fixed. See, they're moving again. But that isn't all that it takes for something to be fixed. Oh, is 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 that why they made fun of me? Who makes fun of you? Uh, every 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 everyone at home. They what? Well, they all made fun of me. And they picked on me because they said that I'm I don't know how to do things right. So so I made friends with with my animal buddies. These are these are my friends. Have you met Nibbler? Yeah, but I've also met other friends that you've made that are maybe a little bit more whole. Uh, they, they don't smell as bad. I uh, well. Mm, yeah, mostly. Oh. Foxy, same thing. Give me an intelligence check, not a save, a check. Okay. Intelligence. Oh, got it. Okay, hold on. 14. While Gospel's talking to you, you remember seeing... Sid, with the hole punched in him as you were pulling the spiky seed out of him that bit into your own arm and was hurting you. And even as you look down at your arm, you start to see the marks from it forming. You remember seeing Torvin collapse in front of you as the ship was spinning out of control. It all comes flooding back to you. Oh, oh. that chubby little squirrel isn't Torvin. Oh. Torvin, Torvin's in trouble. There we go. Hey, that, you know, this is great. I think that he's actually just waiting for you now, so you can fix things now. Yes, please. I, uh, okay. Uh, um, okay. Let, 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 let's go fix my friends. Uh, uh, Sid. Oh, no, Sid. Okay, let's go, let's go fix my friends. Uh, uh, can, can, we, okay. can we bring the bunnies? They're sisters. We can't, we can't separate them. Mm, I don't think that is a good idea. I don't think that actually they would be able to come back with you anyway. Hey, just really quick before I do this, are you sure you don't want to become a cleric of the void? Because I know last time we talked, you seemed like maybe you were curious and, you know, this is a good time, but... No, Torva needs you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have... That's, no, because no, I think like, if, I, if I ever made any big changes, uh, I think Kaiho would yell at me. Uh, uh, but uh, gospel? Yes. A um, couple, couple things. If if we go, can can you hold can you hold my hand for a moment? Okay. And w one more thing. Um, gospel. I, I'm doing good, right? I don't know that I have enough objective information to judge, but it seems like you are from what I've seen. Okay. Okay, and I hold Tiny's hand too. Okay. I'll hold both Tiny's hand and Boxy's hand, and little. Balls of light will emerge from both, and and go and go around them to bring them back to back out of the void. Bye, Nibbler. You, you all, you appear back on the deck of the Decidueone Gospel. It's the ship you've seen before, but it is not wrecked, but it is heavily damaged. You can see where the ship was basically grabbed and squeezed. So the hole is crushed all across the deck. The treant at the back is listing slightly over to the side and laying on the deck on his back is Torvin. Boxy, he's shot through and through and you see immediately just by looking at him, he doesn't have much time left. <laughs> ah, sorry, hold on. So, let us just see real quick. I need Boxy and Torvin to roll initiative. Let us see if she can even get to him before his next death save. Oh, it fell off? So, 13. Wait, Florida, don't we played as the rolls. We played as the lines. Okay, okay. I said, said Florida don't exist. Yep, hold on. And then I got to add my... I got to add my... Mm-hmm. 22. Torvin, your trip back 
it was quite unlike the others. For everyone else, it's like you wake up from a, a dream. The, the ship was in catastrophic distress, and now you're sort of just floating in a sea of nothingness. But you come back to yourself. Riddle, you're aware. You're standing on the deck of the ship. Boxy, gospel, you feel the deck under your feet. But Torvin, you feel yourself slipping away. When Kaiho was at the end, he saw his ancestors bidding him to come and join the eternal battle. What does Torvin see waiting for him? That room. Just this spherical void in the center of the room and him floating towards it and just slowly melting himself into it. What, if anything, does Riddle say in the mere moments that she arrives before Boxy can intervene to find Torvin in this state? Torvin, it's gonna be okay. Because Whittle once said that people never leave Ravenloft, and well, if you die, you'll just come back to Ravenloft with me. Boxy. Having won the initiative, you will have a chance to intervene. But I need to know, for the sake of fate and chance, give me the death save, Torvin, just so we will know. You having already failed twice, a third failure would have been death. Again, Boxy will was fast enough. She Can will I, intervene in time. Oh, yes. Can I cast anything to help oh, yes. him with his role? No, you'll be able to save him. Oh, I just okay. want to know for science. For science. Got it, got <laughs> How it. this was going to go. The moment Torvin hears Riddle's voice, I imagine, in this ether, uh, his body fully becomes absorbed into the sphere, and then he starts taking form again and trying to pull himself back out. And I'm rolling a 1d20, and it's an 8. Boxy. He will die. What does Boxy do? Can uh, Boxy wants to cast Spare the Dying. Boxy, again, as a grave cleric, you have an intrinsic sense of life and death, of the, the thin very thin silver line that separates us from the next world and you are aware he's fading and you hold out your hand and stop it hey hey torvin don't let death take hold i'm gonna save you but you're gonna owe me some gold and then she lays tiny right on torvin's face what a clarification is mm -hmm. spare the dying a reaction she can use well one she rolled high enough in initiative but right. but two uh, spare the dying for her as a bonus action as a grave cleric and she could do it at range so she very easily could be like Pew! but her <laughs> spare the dying before i before i die die uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh yes she cast oh, yes. Spare the dying. oh yes oh yes no Perfect. she 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 saved you i just wanted to know for science <laughs> was that third roll going oh, yeah. to be the end for our astral oh man <laughs> yep no boxy you literally saved his life yay boxy's just shoving tiny in his face wake up wake up torvin torvin Since just wakes up ah! <laughs> <laughs> since we are out of initiative gospel now that you see them back in their physical forms they're all beat up boxy is beat within an inch of her life herself uh, torvin was very clearly grievously wounded um oh. i don't recall if riddle had taken any damage in that conflict or not uh, paper cut but the decision again the decision itself is clearly visibly damaged something terrible has happened what happened to you all well the last thing i remember we were hur hurling towards the void in astral space or the astral sea. Uh, yes, you got there. Slim was attacking us. I was I was sitting on top of Sid um, with with Boxy, and and there was like a projection of Slim sitting next to us, and I didn't know if it was actually him or not. 
Um, and, and I remember being really worried about Torvin and, and I had this weird dream that I met you in the past when I was first created by Whittle. Yes, I was there. In case you don't know, Hakatha Slim is a mind flare that, that uh, slings guns just like I do. Of course, he cheats and he uses magic to make himself, uh, uh, to defend himself because he doesn't want to be hit by me. So uh, he's kind of a chicken, to be completely honest. He's kind of an abyssal chicken. Chicken's and uh, not a great shot, but he got lucky on me this time. But uh, you know, we'll square it away soon. You're going to get him next time, Torvin. That's the plan. I only need to get him once. Don't I have to be next time or the time after that. Was there anyone else there with you when you went through? Because I felt other ripples in the void that were not you. Oh, God. Do, do we know where regular Bonnie or, is, <laughs> or, or, or Handsome George or... Uh... We got there. We got there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Natalie Prime. Um is is you all are kind of starting to to take inventory here and patch up your wounds is you notice when you look out over the edges of the ship there's nothing it's almost like you were in a completely dark room if there were only just enough light to see each other i would stop short of calling it like a spotlight on you you're where well, you can see but then there's nothing in any direction and are we are we in the void now yes this is the void where you are mm -hmm. oh oh the last time it was really dark i just turned this on <gasps> oh it's the oh, button that yeah. turns on the the crystal you do see uh, everything illuminate. And when you start to glow a little brighter, you see Sid just say, oh, you guys are back. Oh. Hi. Sid, are you okay? I had a very bad dream. I had a weird dream. I think all of us just had this really weird dream together. Were we? actually together no but i was there with you in your weird dreams i'm only allowed to talk about some of them i'm glad you weren't there for my dream it was wonderful <laughs> as you all see regular bonnie who was still on the deck with you <laughs> just starts waving she is a hunched over hag of a woman who's like i was making a delicious <laughs> Back when I still was with my sisters, we all brought various components to mix together. I miss those days. Double, double toil and trouble, such as it was. Hey, Bonnie, what happened to your sisters? That was a very different recipe. <laughs> oh, also, Captain, sorry for the scorching on the deck there. I just thought you needed a bit of an intervention. <laughs> and you still see there is a black swath from the circle of death that went off on the Aratok, <laughs> scorched across the deck of the ship. No, regular Bonnie, no, you did a fantastic job. I appreciate it. That's why you're uh, my second command. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so... I, I cannot, as I, I'm going to assume we're going to be eating these for the next few months. Um, best to lock them up in the fridge. Uh, we appear to be in, in nowhere. It's very dark here. Are we um, still injured? Like, am I still at my one HP? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. What am I at? <laughs> it, 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 it Well, as a grave cleric, again, Boxy, when she heals you, she will heal you for the max. So it's what what uh, what heal do you choose to drop on Torvin? Because you it will give him the maximum hit points possible when you do. What do you mean? What heal? Like which? Uh, you know, you have level one, level two, level three. Oh, uh, uh, love, love. <clears throat> Let's see how much money does Torvin have? <laughs> um, yeah, I gotta make some money. Le level three. Uh, which I believe is 3d8 plus what for you? Plus four. Plus four. So you'd be yes. a 16 to 28 points of damage. Uh, she will give back to you 
Torben. Okay. Um, 28 points of healing. But please yeah. no, oh, no on the damage. 28 points of healing. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, different thing. Yeah. Foxy is still on, on Sid's branch <laughs> as she casts this and she looks over at Tor. She pops her head up and goes, You owe me gold. I'm gonna... yeah. No, I, I owe you gold. Yeah, that's that's fine. I, I was thanks. Thanks for keeping me alive. I appreciate it. I wasn't really ready to go into, you know, the, the afterlife. Uh, Mount Celestia yes. and all of that stuff. Gospel. Boxy is clearly grievously injured, as is Sid. So, yes. I would like to use healing word. I'm going to do two third level healing words. One on. Uh, well, OK, wait, Boxy and who else is the treant? The, the, the treant Sid. Oh. Does healing word work on a treant? Yeah, he's a living thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then I will do a third level healing word on each of them. Perfect. So for Boxy, that's going to be uh, 7 plus 5, 12 points of healing. Oh. And then <laughs> for, um, for Sid, that's going to be another 12 points of healing. Yay! Boxy gets up, sits up, and goes, huh? I'm hungry. <laughs> I've got some delightful stew saved downstairs. <laughs> Yay. Boxy, Boxy I don't, don't eat the stew because I think, I think Bonnie cooked her sisters. Oh. The stew. Oh, oh, I don't want that, no. Well, don't ah. judge. Uh, you know, uh, you know, everyone, uh, Prepares meals differently. Uh, Riddle, I want more for me. <laughs> you see, she turns and goes downstairs. Uh, sorry, Torvin, I know you were about to say something, but all of you give me a perception check. She's probably joking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. You said perception. Perception. Like my old yes. enemy. <laughs> 17. 17. And 15 for me. 15. 10. 10 25. 25. Uh, gospel, it makes sense that you are attuned to this place. You become aware of another light. Time, space, distance is basically meaningless here, so it's that way-ish. But another light appears, which is unusual. And another light besides the light that is that holds the ship right now? Mm-hmm. Some distance off that direction you just see another light someone else is here friend i don't know oh. can i like point to them to where the light is so they can hopefully see it who, who was that that got the 17. Uh, riddle uh, you see it fairly quickly boxy and torvin it takes you a minute but again it's just like in a sea of just nothingness there is a light oh. over there. Oh, I see it way out there. Yeah. What is that? Well, it's either a good sign or a bad sign. Maybe we shoot it. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe it's a giant will o wisp just floating around the ether. I don't know. It's got touch. It, does it feel anything like the three sort of like difficult to pin down ripples that I felt before? Give me another uh, either religion or perception. I think you said it was perception that was higher. Actually, this time, actually this time, give me just a flat wisdom check. Okay. Who is them? That is a 19. So remember I said you felt three presences. Two of them were very similar and one of them was different. This feels like the different one. Ah. I think this came through with you. You all hear Kaiho's voice speaking to you through the ship. I assume everyone is intact again. More yeah. or less. Hi, Kaiho. Hi, Boxing. Are you okay? Mm hmm Yeah, I'm hungry. Did you see anything? Uh, some... Uh, gospel, gospel took me on a nice trip, and mm. and then I helped Torvin, and he owes me like five gold. Don't let him forget that. Absolutely not. Um, so we might have a minor problem. Uh, as far as I can tell, 
we should be going at maximum speed right now. I don't know if we're going at the speed of thought or not moving at all. Mm. And it's true, as you all look out, it's just nothing. Again, when you're in the astral sea, there is this swirling, colorful mass, but there is still some concept of perspective, some, some sense of motion. It's, you don't know, are you standing still or are you traveling like bats out of hell right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Since, since Riddle think. has wheels for feet, I think she's just going to stand there and see if there's any velocitation. And if there is, it would probably move her back. Can I make some Riddle. kind of check for that? Especially because you're a construct. I like where this is headed, Riddle. Uh, give me perception with advantage. All right. They didn't First. build a compass in her? <laughs> Oversight. You need mm -hmm. gravity for a compass to work. Oh, it's true. <laughs> Fair. Uh, so More. 17 again. Riddle. Um, you don't necessarily like stay still when the ship takes off because, you know, that all, you know, the, the relative motion and physics and silliness. But you're pretty sure you're moving. You're pretty sure you're moving. You just feel like you're moving. Although, again, there's just darkness and even the light relative to you it's like the light seems like it's staying in the same place relative to you although riddle now nah, actually gospel you give me perception with advantage now although riddle you are sure you're moving uh that is a, uh, uh, a dirty 20. light's getting closer gospel the rest of you are like darkness a light cool <laughs> riddle Either or gospel it's getting closer we're approaching it or it's approaching us or maybe both Riddle, are you okay? I had a, uh, I had disturbing visions. I can only expect what you always have been. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, I just had this really weird dream that I gospel was there when I was created, but it was a pretty happy memory. And um, it seems like Whittle's plan all along was to send me to you. So I'm grateful that you're still here. Did you have any weird dreams? No, completely blacked out. And he yeah. just kind of looks at you. <laughs> yes, I can confirm this. Could Riddle make a roll? The best thing when he inside check him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, inside. Inside versus deception, Torvin. Tor you know what? Torvin immediately <gasps> wants to play poker with Gospel. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, it was almost a sixteen, but it's a five. Oh, a deception, okay. Torvin. Actually, uh, Boxy, give me insight as well. Seems legit, Riddle. <laughs> oh, that's weird, because I feel like everyone had weird dreams, but you, I, I guess that's because you were you were hit pretty hard. Uh, probably because I was dead, or like close to dead, or partially yeah. dead, so uh, yeah, that would explain most of it. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, Boxy, you feel like He's not telling you the whole story, but I mean, your dream was nice. So, okay. I mean, maybe he had a nice dream. Hmm. You have this weird thing with your face when you're not telling. Who, who the... told you? I just look at you a lot. Anyways, I got to see my pet cat again. That was really nice. Oh, good for you. I'm, I'm very happy. I owe you five gold. Yes. Thank you. Boxy, I've asked you a different question here when you have a second. Sure. Um, gospel. What, uh, if anything, is gospel doing? Do you think that these, that this other thing is, is, is going to be a problem or it feels, does it feel like, uh, to, to me, I know that when they arrived here, I just felt like, oh, they're out of place, like they don't belong here. Is that just how this other one feels too? Give me another wisdom check, but you can give it with advantage. Because again, this is what gospel does. I think I've been rolling well. It'd be really embarrassing if I was supposed to be good at this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a 21. Gospel. Again, you are aware there are others who can traverse the void, of course, just like you can. This light is 
I won't say it feels like native, but it feels like something you would expect to encounter. Hmm. The other two do not. The other hmm. two are a hostile incursion into this space. You don't see them. It's just the, the feeling that you got from initially. So the light we're approaching that we're moving towards is like good. Other two bad. Uh, it, it, I mean, neither good nor bad, but not. It doesn't feel like it doesn't belong. Right. Okay. This thing, this thing that we're coming close to, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it will be a problem or not. But two other things came in with you, and they will be problems. I think. Was there anything with you when you went through the eye of the eye of doom, darkness, death? Well, oh wait, we had a lunar drive. Wait, where, where, where's Andrusel? Oh yeah, uh, where'd he go? Is Andrusel okay? Uh, Andrusel. You down in the cargo hold. You all, those of you that can speak draconic here, I had the most unusual dream. It was like I was a hashling again, and I was wrestling with my brothers and sisters, and I was, it was a terrible day because I was born smaller than the rest of them. But I'm the most glorious now, though. He's yeah, fine. it's true, I agree. You are the most glorious of all of them. My, my draconic and mercane very much slide into <laughs> each other. He's okay. Yeah. Hey, um, hey, Torvin. Yes, Boxy, how you doing? Can we go? Can we? Can we go over here by Sid? Just have a little conversation about you know my dues. Just, just be, be about you your mean, dues. Yeah, yeah. I mean that the money that you owe me. Yeah, yeah. No, that's oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know why we have to go over to Sid. <laughs> I like Sid. He's my best friend. Sid's my <laughs> best friend. As well, well, Riddle's my best friend. <clears throat> so, but uh, why why are you doing that thing with your face? Again, who told you? I don't know what, what you're talking about about my you? face. My face is perfectly fine. No. Stable as always. You do that thing with your nostrils when you lie. Oh. That's true. Listen, Torvin. Either you... Look, I know your pockets are empty right now. So you tell me the truth or I'm going to go tell them myself. Why are you lying? What are you not telling us? I don't like it when people lie. You know that, right? The afterlife is something deeply personal for everybody. I'm not necessarily lying, but I, I, you know, I just keeping my keeping it to myself. I don't ask you about everything about your time on Crin. I have a lot of questions. First off, you can heal things. No one on Crin can heal things, at least uh, not since I left. So yeah, let's just call it even. You sound kind of ungrateful right now, Torvin. I'm not ungrateful. I'm gonna get you with money anytime soon. But you're asking, listen, I appreciate me having life. Me having life doesn't mean I'm gonna tell you all about myself or the vision I had. It's you know, that's just how it goes. Well, if it was all clowns, would you like to hear no, hear about my clown visions? Uh, it is such a sissy when it comes to clowns. Hey, wait, don't distract me. Okay, first off, you've not met a clown <laughs> like we ha- like I have. <laughs> you're not gonna feel that way when you meet him. You're going to be like, oh, God, oh, God, Torvin was right. They're eating me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Look, I, look, I, I, look, I've paid attention. I know when you're lying. And if you don't tell me right now, I'm going to go over and I'm going to tell your best friend, Riddle. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scream it throughout the whole entire. I'm going to have Bonnie cook you if you don't tell me. Bonnie's not going to cook me. Trust me. I've I will cook you. Bonnie she and I are l- so close. I have given her so many ingredients. You don't even know. I bought her. I bought Bonnie. Bonnie's mine. You can't imagine the number of bodies. The ones that didn't go to my gelatinous cube farm back on the Rock of Brawl have gone to Bonnie to cook up. Also, you know, when you poop something out, it's pretty hard to trace where that body went. That's Bonnie's true. all on my side. That's true. When you poop it out, it's it's just like this weird um, thing. Listen, we can talk about this another time. We're we're in absolute complete darkness. <coughs> it's here. We got a whole crew of people in distress. Boxy would like to cast them th- thaumaturgy thaumaturgy mm-hmm. to make her voice real loud. Mm-hmm. All right. <sighs> Torvin's lying about his thing. <laughs> Torvin got close to death and something weird happened and we won't tell us. Hey, Riddle, Torvin's lying. You see 
Natalie Prime's head comes up the staircase from below, and she's like, Captain, um, would you like me to deal with Foxy somehow divulging Captain's secret? I'm, I'm not sure what the proper protocol. I, I would offer to throw her overboard, but I believe not only would Kaiho be upset, but she would remain stuck in our gravity well. In liar, liar! No, we don't have a member of the crew as long as they're not doing a mutiny like that. I don't even remember his name. I, I just remember it was a shot bolt right through the back of his head. But no, we are not hurting Boxy. That we're and she doesn't even know what she's talking about, so it's fine. Yeah. I imagine the scream though in Thaumaturgy yeah. was like right. we hard cut. Yeah. A <laughs> billion miles away, <laughs> but there's just the deciduum moving in complete darkness, and yeah, just like, like the <laughs> springs are right. popping out of Riddle's yeah. eardrums right now. <laughs> Some space whales far away are like, ooh, what is that? You, Boxy, you see Natalie Prime, which again is this magnificent warforge in this like gleaming white uniform, and she walks over and she just leans down and says, "Did the captain do the thing with his face?" <gasps> You know, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. The thing with the nose, only one flare. It's the weirdest thing, right? You know about it. I, I was under the impression that the entire crew knew, but please do not divulge the captain's tell amongst visitors. And she just motions towards gospel. Does the vow of silence still apply now that people know that you're lying or? Captain, would you like me to dispatch the cleric of the void? <laughs> <laughs> Torben, why is everyone saying there's lies being told? Okay, like does everyone, I'm going to be right back. We're going to discuss this. Torben. <laughs> Where'd he go? <laughs> Torben. Uh, I hope he comes you back to something incredible. You can't just disappear after <laughs> Torben lying like that. And lying. <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay, I appreciate that we're all in distress. Everyone wants to know all my business, but there's a couple of things I want to iron out. I respect and love all of you. You are a part of the crew. We are all together in this, but I am your captain. <laughs> so that means we just don't get into my personal business, okay? He has put on the hat. That is how you know he is serious. It is the exact opposite of when he does the thing with his face. <sighs> okay, uh... Boxy. Yeah. You feel like the light is calling to you. And as you notice, if having like take a moment that you were talking to Torvin here, it's physically much larger larger. Like before it was maybe, you know, the size of like a, a pin. Now it's much larger. I wouldn't call it the sky, it's the void, but it's bigger now. And you feel like it's reaching out to you personally. Oh, uh, uh, hey, hey, Torvin. Yes. Uh, uh, that is Captain Torvin. Would you like to be addressed as Captain Torvin? Yeah, Captain that'd be, Torvin. I mean, uh, 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 no, no. Let's be familiar. No, I, I don't want to be like Mer Zombie Mer Morel. Mm. God. No, no, no. That's fine. What is uh, it, Foxy? Ah. Uh, did not Zombie Morel leave with you, Gospel? What was the fate of our previous captain? <laughs> he is now a supplicant of the void. <gasps> oh, good. Yay! What a joy for him. Oh, yay. I do not know if that is good or bad, mm -mm. but he's I a, accept the supposition. Is he like, wait, did she say succulent? Like those plants that don't, don't need uh, dirt? No, a supplicant, although he also does not need dirt, for there is none here. Supplements. I mean, Supplements. if he's a zombie and, and we killed him, then he would need dirt. I don't mm -hmm. know where we bury him. Where do we? We generally don't bury anybody uh, at sea. This, while an enjoyable thought experiment, seems unrelated to the approaching large light. That's oh, right. Yeah. That's right. Twilight. That's right. There's a light. Twilight. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. What? 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 <clears throat> First and foremost, I'm sorry for yelling. Thank you. Second of all, that, that, that light looks, it's kind of creepy, but it's kind of cool. And I want, I want, I want to go look at it. Can we, Captain, can we move towards the light? Yeah. Uh, kind of kind of feels like we're done here. You know what I mean? There's nothing here <laughs> and there's light over there and it's kind of a binary decision. 
Yeah. But uh, I'm going to go for the light for now. Yeah. Um. Well, as I mentioned previously, I believe we are going all out at this exact second. You know, uh, honestly, it's been a bit of a day. So if one of you would like to come down here and try your hand at, and then suddenly you all hear him scream. Just <laughs> ear splitting, even louder than Boxy. And he just goes quiet. And you feel like... Riddle, that intrinsic sense you had of the ship moving is gone. Uh, I run down to Kyle. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I follow, Riddle, I follow. Riddle's right behind uh, Boxy yeah, and Torvin. When you get down there to see him, he's still in the spelljammer chair, but he is rocked to the side, and there is blood coming out of his nose and out of both of his ears. Kyle. And his eyes are sort of flittering. Like, Oh, uh, Boxy runs over to Kyle right away and grabs him by the shoulders and shakes him. Kyle, Kyle, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he says to you in gif, Boxy, I'm I'm fighting them. They're trying to, I'm fighting, (gasps) fighting. Ah, 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 They're in his brain. They're in his brain. On the deck of the ship, gospel. You see the light get even closer until you can make out what it looks like. It is something that you are aware of, if only by reputation. It looks like, under different circumstances, a gargantuan jellyfish swimming through the void. It has tendrils that trail out behind it in brilliant bioluminescent light going on each side of it. What do I know about this creature? I am going to send it to you now. Also, does anyone else be gift besides me? Um, I I think we've established Torvin does. Torvin. Uh, no, I, no, I do not. I do not, uh, speak, uh, gift. Torvin, you are, he says in gift. You are speaking it right now. I can hear you. (laughs) Can I go over to the, how, how far is it from like where, from the deck to the like seat where Kaiho is? Uh, he's like down a level, basically. So I can like go to the down, the stairs or whatever and shout? Yeah, mm-hmm, absolutely. Uh, this is a problem. This is going to be a problem. This is an immediately approaching problem. Oh, oh my, but Kaiho, Torvin, Torvin, he's fighting someone, help him. I slowly move towards Kaio and I gently put my hand up to his face. And I just slap. Hey! Stop out of it! What? What's in your brain? What's in your brain? What's wrong with you? You got blood and everything coming out of all your holes. I haven't checked your pants yet. Oh my god! (sighs) Thank you, Boxy. No thanks at all to Torvin. (laughs) Sorry. Um, you all hear a rotating message that begins repeating. It plays in celestial, then in common, then in deep speech, then in draconic. So if you speak those any those languages, you're aware it is saying the same thing over and over again. Hello. Glory to you that you have been blessed by me. (laughs) I don't think it will be worth your while to try and fight back, but I do so hope you do, because a coward dies a thousand deaths, a hero dies only one. And it just continues repeating that in all of these different languages. Who's that? You hear that? I was in Celestial, Draconic, and what? uh, Celestial, Common, Deep Speech, and Draconic. So she says in Common, like you all, if only in Common, you understand it. It's just if you hear, if you speak multiple of those languages, you know it's saying the same thing on repeat. So, Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a voice in our heads? No, this was out loud. You very much uh, hear this. It's like it's almost like a recording over a loudspeaker. mm -hmm. Like if, uh, if, if just like an announcement starts playing on a loop. Uh, um, Boxy, stop slapping Torvin. Uh, uh, th- thank that? you. <laughs> well, uh, seems like uh, the same message on repeat in several languages. And uh, 
seems a bit lazy. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think I think it's bad, especially no. if it's just like doesn't even want to communicate directly with us. It it's clearly telling us to give up. So we're not going to do that. Is that what's hurting, Kaiho? Uh, I don't can expect see here around the spelljammer helm that he's attached to the lights that radiate on it start to dim and you all feel the whole ship just goes quiet you kind of it's almost like when you have a headache and you don't notice when it's gone there is always just a sort of ambient hum a vibration of the vessel that it it in it many ways it is a living thing although the ship itself is not alive sid has so such an interwoven part of it that it is almost like it has a pulse it's gone torvin you especially having spent so much time as a sailor and now even you boxy as well spent your fair share of time you realize the ship is dead I'm just going to go down to where they are since they are clearly not coming up to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gospel, you see this thing coming like much closer and the tentacles trailing behind it start coming out like they're coming around to the forefront. Yeah, I'm going to run down to the to, to where they all are. Mm-hmm. Gospel, uh... as you come down, you see the scene is described. Kaiho is basically slumped over you can see his chest is still moving as his nose and ears are continuing to bleed and you're also aware that all the lights have gone out um this is this is bad these are the the rhaegar what do they want (laughs) oh to destroy you and everything oh perfect so uh it's that kind of day um All right, uh, everyone, man, man the ballista, the one cannon we got. Uh, hey, don't we have like a barrel of alchemist fire? We could like toss that at them. Is there anything that they naturally fear, like a predator or something they would really like to eat? Like maybe a whole bunch of the weird creatures we just murdered? They like to destroy things not for a purpose, but because they find it beautiful. So it's not, there's no, it's not like a predator that needs to feed They'll just keep doing it. Oh, super fun. This is going to be terrible. Uh, okay. Doesn't my religion seem so much better now, really? <laughs> um, <laughs> little column A, little column B. Everyone, this is your captain speaking. I grab the sending stone. Uh, everyone to battle stations. I know we've been doing this a lot lately, but uh, we've got giant jellyfish to kill <laughs> that apparently <laughs> loves to just destroy things. You all hear static come over the same PA system that Kaiho usually uses to speak with you. And it just says, oh, hello, this is fantastic. What a pleasant surprise. I'm happy to destroy you all. I would just like to check in beforehand. Would you like me to simply pick you off one by one and continue on my journey? Or would you like to elect a champion that I will personally bless with death? Marvin. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, well, first off, I and volunteer that. myself, but Marvin. I have an alternative solution for you. How about we leave, you let us go, and we bring you ships. Once we're done, we loot them, we get gold from them, and we bring you these souls, and then you get to destroy them. Because most people, frankly, they see the void, and they're like, I don't want to go in there. That seems dark and mysterious. There might be a terrible monster in there. And they'd be right. But... You know, we could bring you some repeat customers. Better what's idea. your What's your name? Torvin. 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 Ah, uh, that's not ringing any bells. Uh, oh, that's <laughs> hmm. That's okay. I tell you what, Torvin. If you live through the next minute, I'll tell you my name too. Oh. And that is a good place <laughs> for us to set up. <laughs> ah, I got tongue tied. I'm so excited. <laughs> See you next week. This is Jim Torment. <laughs> and you know what? You uh, are a sissy that loves clowns or hates clowns too much, and you don't even shoot straight. And you smell weird. And I saw one time what? you only showered you once a week, oh, and you hang out. With the trash can, and even the trash can looks better than you.